Hi everyone, Lori Jill here. In today's tutorial, I'm going to review a few things about the mixer brush, specifically when clone painting from a photograph. I wanted to put this together because many of you know that I have been in Photoshop for many, many years. I started learning Photoshop in 5.0, that was way before the CS versions. And more recently, I have been concentrating my focus on digitally painting in Photoshop. So for about the last two years, I have been attending workshops and I'm on many websites and constantly learning the digital painting and primarily because Photoshop introduced the mixer brush. The mixture brush is my favorite tool to paint with in Photoshop. Now before the introduction of the mixer brush, we've always had the paintbrush and the paintbrush is what people have been painting in Photoshop with for years. So lots is possible there and that would be this one right here, the regular brush, but at the drop down menu, you will see at the very bottom the mixer brush. What the mixer brush is, for anybody who's a traditional artist out there, you will totally understand the benefits to uh, the mixer brush and why it is giving us greater possibilities in Photoshop. It is just like a traditional artist brush in the fact that you can add water to it, you can load the brush with a little paint or a lot of paint, you can add multiple colors to the brush, just like a traditional artist might put many different colors of paint on their paintbrush to paint with. You can do all of those things with the mixer brush. With the advancement of Photoshop though, although a lot of the graphic arts world has been learning uh, all these great things in the mixer brush, I still say anything new, it'll take some time before the education and trainers catch up to it. So there aren't a lot of photography instructors out there teaching how to turn your photographs into digital paintings using Photoshop. A lot of people are still in Corel Painter. I love Corel Painter. I have that program too, but not as much as I love Photoshop. So I, if I can do it in Photoshop, that's what I want to do. And my goal is to be able to teach you as much as I learn and help you do the same thing. In that, I've heard from a couple instructors, and I don't want to say that everybody is not trying to learn this. It's a huge program. All that we can do is share back and forth with each other what we learn and what works and doesn't work. But I heard on a website, very famous website, a misconception that I want to put straight because I believed it and I taught it in some of my previous workshops, but it's not completely true. And I have now heard the person come back onto the website and apologize for the fact that they didn't completely teach it correctly. So that I'm kind of doing the same thing. I've taught this incorrectly. The option bar at the top of the mixture brush does control a lot of things, whether you're using it as a cloning brush or a regular painting brush. And that's the purpose of this video is hopefully I will clear some of that up and show you what I have personally learned by experimenting with my tools. I heard Julianne Cost, um, I think just last week say, the best way to learn how to create in Photoshop is to learn the tools inside and out. Know exactly how to use everything you wanna use so that you can create what you want to create. So we're gonna talk about first of all, how to use the mixture brush as a cloning brush. And I teach in my full tutorials how to do a clone painting setup and everything. This is really just about the mixer brush today. So I'm going to control J just to have a new layer. The mixer brush becomes a cloner when it has absolutely no paint loaded to it. So over here is how you tell if there's paint loaded. I have it transparent. You can see that by the little checker box. If I turn this on, it will load the paint from my foreground of my color well. If I turn it off, it's transparent. That means that the pixels that it paints with are, have to be on the canvas. If I would paint on a blank canvas, if I'd go like this and it'd be a transparent blank canvas and I have no paint coming onto the brush, I would not paint a thing. As you can see, as I paint, nothing happens. If I turn sample all layers on, that means it will sample from any layer that has an eyeball on. So if I only wanted to sample from one layer, I can turn the eyeballs off on any other layers and then I can paint, as you can see. I don't choose to do it this way. I find that the sample all layers method for clone painting will slow down a processor and I have a very fast solid state drive machine, but it still slows mine down. So I don't choose to do this very often. So let's turn that off and let's delete this blank layer and go back to just painting on this layer. You can pick any brush you want to be a cloner. You just go under your brush preset. These are the default brushes that come with Photoshop, but you can do the fly out menu. You can pick any number of brushes that you want to. And you can pick any brush you want to be a clone painting brush. So a soft round, you can do, um, you know, a round fan stiff thin bristles. You can pick a sponge brush, a spatter brush, anything you like. So let's just do that. Let's pick a sponge brush. There we go. 
Okay, so now I have a Photoshop default sponge brush, nothing loaded, so it's transparent. In order to make it paint, the wet must be somewhere between 1% and 100%. One of the misconceptions is that that doesn't matter, and I'm going to prove to you that it does. If I'm at 0%, you're going to see that I can't do anything. The canvas paint, that would be this doggy. By the way, this is a friend of mine's doggy, so it's very sweet. He let me use this to paint with. If the wetness is 0%, that means this is a dry sponge and my canvas is dry. And if you, in real traditional medium, if you had a dry canvas of paint and a dry sponge, this is what would happen. Nothing. So if you turn it up to one, like just maybe not 1%, but let's just go down here in a very low 4%. I'm going to zoom in a little bit so you can see this. And I would paint. I always just hit my B key to go back to my brush. If you wonder how I get to my brush so quickly, I just, my B key gives me that. If nothing much is happening, 4% is not a lot of water. A little bit's happening, but not a lot. If I move this up some, let's go to 25%. Still not very much. So you can see as I move around, it's a sponge. So it's, it's moving, just not very quick because I don't have, I only have 25% water on my sponge. If I go all the way up to 100%, I can move much faster. I don't know if you can see that. It's a sponge brush, so it's not moving the same as you might think something else. It moves like a sponge. But that's what the wetness does. It either makes my sponge a little wet or makes it a lot wet. And that's the same with a bristle brush or any other kind of brush. Just how much water do you want to apply? How wet do you want things to be for mixing your paint? And if you think about it in the terms of traditional paint, it's much easier to understand. Uh, that's what I did. I've started learning from every kind of traditional painting place that I can. I've joined the Artist Guild. I go on YouTube. I learn acrylics, oils, everything I can because learning the traditional paint world makes it so much easier to understand the digital paint world. And that's my tip for the day. Okay, so let's let's go pick another brush. Actually, you know what? I'm going to go into my tool presets. This is where I save my brushes. And I save them under tool presets because when I make all these adjustments up here, even when I add color, if I save it as a tool preset, it saves it here for me so I don't have to keep making those adjustments. This is actually my animal brushes, so I'm going to pick my big hair brush, and we'll just work with that. Let's go ahead and um, copy again. Let's work on another layer. I'll turn that top one off so you can see what's going on. Okay, so I now have my big hair brush. This comes with some of my courses, by the way, and is available on my website, but you can use, this is just a bunch of dots. That's how I make my hair brush. Now, what I want to do is show you same thing with this brush. We're going to take this wetness way down. And if I paint with it, it just moves it not even noticeably. <laughs> and if I move it all the way up to pretty wet in the 80s, you'll see I can move it much easier, much faster. Now, another misconception is that the flow doesn't do anything. Let's take that wetness all the way up to 100%. So we know I've got 100% of water. My canvas, my paint is very wet. With the flow, it's at 100% right now. So I'm not controlling anything. When I paint 100% water, 100% flow, everything's just happening very quickly. And if you like to paint quickly, sloppily, that would be a good method for you. But if you want things to be a little bit more controlled, and when I paint fur, I do, I tend to like to take my flow down. Now watch what happens when I take my flow way down here in the teens. I'm using the same brush, I haven't changed the size or anything on it. I've got a lot of wetness, so it's moving pixels, but I get to control with my flow and my pressure sensitive pen how quickly that happens. If I push harder, which I'm doing right now, I can make it flow just like this. But if I push lightly, then I can make it flow very light off of my brush. It's just like a traditional brush. If you have paint on it and you push very hard on the canvas, you can push a lot of paint onto the canvas. But if you push lightly, which I'm going to do right here, if I push lightly, you're not going to see it because that's a blank. <laughs> I have to find another piece of fur so you can see something in contrast. Let's come down here. If I push lightly, I can make it come very light. See that? Very light. If I push hard, I can bring it out further. So that's what flow does for you. Love that control. Now, the load in the mix, I would have to say with the cloner brush, they don't do a lot. They do much more for you when you're actually adding paint into the brush, which is the next thing I want to go ahead and show you quickly. When you add paint to your brush, if you click this button right here, you can load whatever the foreground color is. If you do the drop down, you'll see load solid color, 
or load brush. If you do the load brush, this is the way, and I'm not going to go into it in this lecture, this is how you can load multiple colors and make your brush dirty and have a lot of colors on your brush, which traditional artists love to do. But we're just going to keep it with the solid color only with the pink so that you can, I'm using pink so that you can see what it does. And let's come down here to good fur part. It is controlled with the mix. If you take this mix all the way down here, go all the way left, it pulls the most paint from here. So with everything else set fairly, let's go ahead and take everything else all the way to 100%. So we're very wet brush. We're going to load our brush fully with 100%, which I'll explain in just a second. And we're going to let it flow off at 100%. But the mix is going to be nothing but pink. Okay, so I'm going to make a brush stroke. And as you can see, it's pretty much nothing but pink. And it flows very fast, very bright. Now, if I want less pink and I want it to be wet, but I want to kind of mix in with this fur, if I take this mix and I go all the way the other way, a very small amount of the pink will happen, but it does happen, as you can see, but it mixes much better. Can you see that? It's mixing with the canvas. It's picking up some of that brown. If I come over here to the white, you'll see it'll pick up some of the white. So it starts to, to mix with the canvas when you come up here much better. Now an even better way to control that is again with the flow. Take that flow back down into the teens. And so then you're not only mixing pink, and it's very hard to see here because it's a small amount of pink, but it's flowing off my brush according to how much pink I want to lay down by my pen pressure sensitivity. So those two things control that. And let's come up here to a clean blank place so I can show you load. Now load determines how much paint I have on my brush. At 100%, I could literally just paint. I have the flow very, very low. Hold on. Let's take, and actually I need to take the mix back down. So let's, let's take the flow back up so that it will flow. But the main thing here is you can see how much little pink is coming because remember, if you go all the way to the right, you're getting very little from the paint well. Go all the way to the left and you'll get a lot from the paint well. So now you can see. So now it's 100% coming from the pink paint well, none from the canvas, and the load is at 100%, which means if I would paint down this page, it's never going to run out. It's 100% loaded, it'll never run out. If I take this load all the way down here, it means I'm just barely dipping my brush into paint. There's just a little teeny bit on the end. And as I paint, you're going to see the load wears out. Now, it didn't wear out as fast because my brush is wet, okay? So if I take my brush and I take the wetness way down, so I don't have any, my, it's fairly dry brush. I'm going down in the 10% or so, fairly dry brush, very small amount of load. And I push, there, it ran out much faster. The flow is already at 100%, so that doesn't do much. So that, any, every brush works a little differently. Some will run out faster as far as the load go than others, but that's how that's controlled. So like I said, once, and it loads onto each stroke. So once, I know it's very hard to see, let me just delete this and we'll do another layer. I get kind of messy when I'm teaching with my layers. Control J. Once the brush actually runs out of paint, I'll make it a little smaller so you can see. There, it's running out. If I don't pick it up, which I'm not, it's, it's dry, it's empty. That's all the paint that was on it. Okay, that's all that load does. And again, like I'm saying, it's not gonna make a whole lot of difference in the mixer, just in when you're adding paint. But when you want to add just, um, and like I said, traditional artists are going to love this. When you want to add some paint into your color of the canvas paint that's going on, this is beautiful because like, let's say I just want some highlights of pink in his fur somewhere. I can load the brush just, just a little bit. So maybe 10, 11%. I may want my wetness just a little higher so that my canvas is a little wet. So maybe I'll go in these 20% range. I'm going to take my mix all the way up to about 90 something. So it's mostly coming from canvas, but I'm getting 10% from the well. Does that make sense to you? So if I come all the way over here, there's only 10% that's coming from the pink. And then, and which I, I say it like that, but it doesn't make a lot of sense. Cause if you go hundred percent, you don't, you would think you'd get 0%, but you still get a small bit from the pink well. And then let's take the flow down too, so that it's controllable by my pen. So we'll take it down into the teens. Now I'm going to paint fur like I normally would like this. And I don't know if you can see that, but I'm actually adding that pink in there at a very low flow. 
very low opacity. And so if you're wanting to kind of color balance background colors and things into your painting, this is a nice easy way to do it without having to add paint from your regular brush in, into the painting and then go back to the mixer and mix it in. If you know how to control these things up here, you can just do it while you're painting. It'll eliminate a couple steps for you. Okay, I think that's all I needed to show you in the mixture brush today. I hope this helps you and we'll see you in the next tutorial.